my name is Mitch Moyers. I'm the Outreach and Assistive Technology Program Specialist for the Sanderson Community Center of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Our uh, offices are located in Taylorsville where the 215 and Redwood meet. We're just behind the, the big super Walmart there. So, uh, We're a full service community center for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, the services that you would see provided at our center, hopefully what we can see uh, equals to what you would see in a community uh, where coming everything from counseling services, um, ed adult classes. We also have an interpreter program there where our interpreters are become certified to become interpreters in the state of Utah. We also provide the adult, the, the adult community education classes. They can be anywhere from English as a second language to uh, fun classes like artwork or I was going to say basket weaving, but we haven't had a basket weaving class. But, uh, but we do have several artwork, pottery making classes. Um, we've had um, math and computer science classes. A lot, of, a lot of good classes that you would see in any regular community center. The only difference is we have a, uh, we overcome the barrier of communication, whether they need to communicate through sign language or if the person requires uh, hearing aids or cannot, doesn't know sign language and doesn't use hearing aids, they have a cart, a cart system, which all the words are printed on the screen and they can see everything that's said. And so uh, we're, we're kind of a, a do-it-all center when it comes to not being able to hear. So <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a lot about the assistive technology for people with hearing, uh, who are deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, most particularly beyond the hearing aid. Um, I, kn I know a lot of people who get hearing aids for the first time in their life where they become uh, late deafens, older in life or over a traumatic event or a medical mispractice or some sort of, some, some sort of uh, function that causes hearing loss. And oftentimes our clients feel like when they get a hearing aid, they feel like this guy right here. This, they're a big advertisement for I have a problem. <laughs> But uh, that's the big focus of what our center is about, is to provide the support and counseling for those who do have a hearing loss. They don't feel like you're sticking out like a sore thumb, they have a hearing loss. It's not the individual's problem, it's actually a community problem, or not really a problem, but a community effort to create an inclusion for everyone. So that's a lot about what the, uh, the technology that I wanted to include here is to show how these, the technology that we talk about will help with um, allowing that to take place. The, uh, there was there, the assistive technology is a huge part of the deaf and hard of hearing. I talked about the video relay service, the interpreters. That one lately in the last five, six years has just been a huge leap and bound for the people who are using ASL as their prim primary language. If you've used uh, TTY or used text-to-speech before, um, if you're familiar with that, where they have the operator typing out everything that uh, the person is saying to the person using the TTY and then type and then speech back. Um, a five minute conversation can take up to a half an hour just on the text to speech. Especially if the person uh, first language is American Sign Language and try to, they're trying to translate ASL into English and it's, uh, it can be a very broken English like you would see someone who is primarily a Spanish speaker trying to speak or type, write in English. Um, so it, the video relay was such a huge, a huge help because they're actually, actually able to use their native language and the interpreter is able to translate almost on the fly. And then the five minute conversation is a five minute conversation. So I wanted to brag about that because really it's, it's a fantastic technology. And if you've ever received a video relay call before you, you've, and a text speech in the past, you've probably noticed the big difference. And a lot of the uh, telephone numbers that deaf or hard of hearing clients are using, um, they'll, if they give you a phone number, most likely that phone number will connect directly to a video relay operator. And it's very seamless as uh, opposed to the old days. We'd have to call an 800 number, then give the phone number of the person you're trying to contact, which delayed the process even more. So, so it's literally changing our lives. Um, assistive listening systems, assistive listening devices, and HAT, uh, hearing assistive technology, all different acronyms or terms that you hear often, and they all mean pretty much the same thing. Probably a little bit of difference is the HAT, the HAT, the uh, hearing assistive technology. That's more of the visual 
um, a visual or tactile alert of a, of a noise that is taking place in the, uh, in the room or in the environment. ALS and ALD is most likely the equipment they wear to help to hear the speech, to hear what is being said or amplify sound. So. Let's break it down to the different types of assistive devices that are available. This is kind of a list of what I'll be going into in detail. Let's jump into the very first one, ALDs and pocket talkers. We call these marriage savers, kind of a joke within the, um, in our office. A lot of time we get couples coming in complaining, saying, he's not listening to me. I talk to him and I don't think he hears anything I say on purpose. And he's saying, no, I really can't hear what she's saying. They, we get arguments quite often in the demonstration room over who can hear and who can't. Um, we don't have any technology for selective hearing, um, but we do have uh, technology for loss of hearing. So. Um, assistive, assisting communication in the car is one of the big ones. Um, if you've ever tried to communicate in the car, even if you hear it just fine, it's very difficult to hear for most people. Myself, is almost impossible. I do have a hearing loss and I do wear hearing aids. So the hearing aids amplify every single sound in that car. So I'm hearing all the wind going over the car. I hear the radio if it's playing. I hear my kids screaming all the time. Um, I hear the tires running over the, the pavement. And that plus my uh, wife or my family is trying to talk to me. It's just very difficult. So I'm always trying to look lip read or, or if they know sign language, it's even better. So um, a lot of people always accuse deaf or hard of hearing of being um, difficult drivers because they sign with their hands or have to look at what they're communicating. But if you'll see, it's actually proven that they're a lot safer in some cases. So maybe could we have more eyes on the back side of our heads or something, I don't know. But, <laughs> but uh, it is a, a challenge when it comes to trying to communicate within the car. So the pocket talker is one uh, resolution for a person can wear headphones or if they wear hearing aids, they can wear a type of telecoil which connect directly to the hearing aid and shuts off all the sound in the car and they can hear directly the per only the person that's speaking into the microphone. So uh, it doesn't look like this guy in the pocket here, but uh, you will always see some pictures as we move along. It also helps with a large gathering like this. If you were all talking at one time and I'm trying to hear one particular person, it becomes a challenge for me because I'm hearing all the other voices along with this person. So if I can have just their voice speaking into the microphone and I can listen to what they're saying. The last part, it is cheaper than a hearing aid. For some individuals, hearing aids may or may not help. Um, oftentimes, we'll see clients who put the hearing aid in the drawer and realize that their he hearing aids are more of a challenge for me to use. I can still hear pretty well without my hearing aids. Why would I need to keep wearing hearing aids uh, if they're just causing more problems? But they still have the, the obstacle of trying to hear what a person is saying in a room or in an auditorium. So this can be a good a replacement for a hearing aid where you're not getting the same challenge of getting all the sounds in the room, but you're getting just the speaker. Here's are some pictures of, of what the uh, pocket talkers look like. Um, the headphones, that, this is a simple headphone that we talk about, and nothing fancy or new. But uh, to the right there, you have the pocket talker, the uh, William Sound is the company that creates this one. Uh, it has the microphone that you can see sticking up in the air, that uh, what received the speaker's voice and sound. Then there would be a jack next to that where that headphone would plug into and they can wear it and listen uh, to everything that comes in that microphone. And it's a nice microphone because it does have a dampening feature. So if there's a lot of external noises, it can tone those down and hear the, the voice that's closest to it. And you can see some examples of people using it. Um, here's a few more other examples of the equipment devices. Um, if you see the woman here wearing a a thing around her neck and she's holding a cell phone or an iPod, that's using a telecoil function um, where she has it directly feeding into her hearing aid. And if she's using the phone, that little box that's on her chest right now would actually pick up her voice, but if she doesn't have to hold the phone next to her ear, she can just speak directly and it'll, the voice will pick up in that box. Um, this was actually kind of a nice kind of nice for people with hearing aids because um, if you wanted to wear the neck coil under your shirt, you can. Um, it's kind of fun to see those who are, if you wanted to walk down a busy city street and you seem like you're talking to yourself and they actually have that little device underneath. Um, actually, you see a lot of people nowadays that wear 
wear those equipment, so especially if they have the jawbone, you can't really see. So it's becoming a more of a, an accepted type piece of technology nowadays because of the Bluetooth and the jawbones and all of those devices. Um, so it's a lot easier to convince people to use these equipment, which are extremely helpful, because it's, not lo it's no longer becoming a, uh, an embarrassing feature to have. It's a very helpful feature. Um, there, is, there is a hearing aid um, that works with a Bluetooth accessory. Um, the hearing aid doesn't have the Bluetooth built in it itself, but it works with an accessory that connects to a Bluetooth, if that makes sense. So like that woman thing around her neck, that would be the Bluetooth receptor, and then the tail coil that's going around her neck would be the one feeding into a hearing aid. So she can connect to a, her phone or um, any other device that has Bluetooth and be able to hear that what's being said. The, uh, the challenge of putting a Bluetooth in the hearing aids is the, not only the size, but the strength of the battery. They haven't been able to resolve um, the battery drain on hearing aids when it comes to using the Bluetooth feature. So hopefully someday we'll have that. Um, just an example of how the assistive listening devices help. If a person's wearing a hearing aid in the very top slide picture here, you see if the speech is going across in the arrow, that microphone is being picked up, as I explained, uh, it's it picking up everything in that environment. Wherever the person is using the microphone and an assistive listening device, the, uh, where, where it said speech, 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 it actually had a wire <laughs> going through there. But um, that it, you'll see it just connect directly into the person's hearing aid, so you're shutting out all those ex external noises and they pick up everything that's being said. So, that's, uh, I keep reiterating that because that's probably one of, one of the most important parts of this uh, piece of technology, um, and why it's so extremely helpful, because a lot of times people forget that hearing aids uh, do pick up all those outside noises. It's not as helpful as many would think. Some examples of the listening devices, we have the hard wire in that picture that I just showed you, the wire that direct connects directly to the person's device in the hearing aid. There's also a wireless, which is an, would be an FM system, and these are two separate devices with no wires in between, but it's using a radio wave to feed to one another. It's the same type of technology you would have in your, your car, where your car, you have a channel tuned in to a particular station. And then there's a transmitter out there somewhere that's on that same station and picking up that connection. Um, then there's the infrared system, which works with an infrared light. Uh, it's the same type of light you see in your television remote. So you have to point at the television, be able to make it activate. If you're pointing anywhere else, you don't get that connection. So this, is the same, this uh, equipment works the very same way. And then there's a sound field assistive listening system. That's kind of a hard one to put in a particular category because it incorporates pretty much everything that you see on the screen, the hardwire and the wireless together. And uh, it's also very nice because this room can be extreme, um, completely wired with this technology. And so all I'll have to do is be pop on this little microphone like I am here, and then it would feed into all that the uh, sound system. So whatever technology that person has, whether it's FM or infrared or telequail, they, collect, they uh, click in on their preference and they get that instant feed, which is really nice. The uh, Utah State Capitol is uh, one that has almost that tech, uh, type of technology I was just telling you about. So if you're a hearing aid user and you have a need to hear with the, uh, the procession that's going on, uh, just let them know that you require the assistive listening devices, they'll turn it on and you can connect right into their system. So, uh, I'm not sure if you want to hear the politician, but you do have the opportunity there to listen to him. This one is an example of the radio, the uh, FM radio system I was telling you about. ComTech is one of the, the popular ones here in Utah that we use in our center. Uh, basically, they're, ba they're based out in Bountiful, so we kind of staying in the state here. Uh, but you'll see you have the, the box at the top left. They, they have the opportunity to dial in on a channel, and the person with the uh, the gray box there connected to the headphones, that would be, the, have the same connecting channel. So the feed, the sound, the audio would being fed directly into that box, it's being transmitted, and everybody who had that gray box would pick up the sound. Uh, below that is a companion kit, where you have the darker little, the little darker box on the right side, that's actually the uh, transmitter. So um, depending on whether you want to put a, plug in a microphone, or if you'll see on the very far right, that's called the table mic. 
Um, so if you have people sitting around on a table, they can just put that microphone in that little round thing and the table will act as the microphone, um, which is really nice because it picks up everybody around the table nice and clearly, but you also pick up paper, table scratching, pencil writing, body noises, um, just about everything that gurgles or scratches and crepes around that table. So. The uh, pocket talkers, they can range anywhere from $50, pretty, uh, they're relatively cheap. Where you get into the equipment like this, uh, the companion kit is about $1,200. And the uh, kit above that, uh, depending on how big the room is and what sound system there is, they can get up to about $3,000. So they run in price about that. Um, doorbell signalers, these are pretty much devices that create a visual or a tactile signal and place them in unheard sound. Um, so if someone ring in the doorbell, you can hear the doorbell ring, uh, and there will be a device connected to it would send out a transmission. And so depending on what lights are connected to the receiver, those lights will flash. Uh, they have a particular pattern, so usually it's six times, one, two, three, four, pretty quickly. And most likely the person will know that's the doorbell ringing. It's also a body, body-worn pager where they can put on their side and it'll vibrate or, or beep if they wanted to know what the doorbell is being, being rung. So. And uh, they also have vibrations where you can put in underneath the bed or on the couch or on a chair or any other place where you most likely can feel vibration. You can have that option as well. I'm getting a little creative here. We've had some people say they connected it to air fans, uh, strobe lights, music, um, anything that has a plug and requires electricity, you can have it connect to those devices. You probably don't want to put it to a radio because it's kind of distracting, but we've had some people do it. So. Talking more about the splash or uh, shake or flash alarms. Uh, these are devices that can work with times, alarm clocks. If you're, uh, if you're a heavy sleeper and you can't hear the alarms in the morning, you can have the bed shake or the lights flash. If you have a hard time hearing smoke detectors, I don't know anybody who does, but uh, there are people without hearing aids who have a hard, hard time hearing smoke detectors, and you have the strobe lights that will flash, and the, the noise is actually twice as loud, if you can imagine that, and it's quite a very loud, piercing noise. Um, I can actually hear it without my hearing aids, and I do have a pretty severe hearing loss, so and they're, they're loud. <laughs> There's also uh, alerts that help with continuous noise or sound alarm, such as babies crying. So if, you have a, if you're a young family and you have young babies and you can't hear the baby cry, um, that, that may be a plus or a negative for some people. Um, <laughs> You can have the lights flash, and it would be a very erratic flash, so you'll know it's a cry versus the doorbell, so you're not answering the door every time the baby's hungry. So. Um, you can also have the bed shaking. Um, I don't want to take that joke too far. Um, then you also have attention alerts where um, someone can click on a pager, like if you have a, somebody who's um, unable to get out, get out of bed or a senior citizen that's not able to walk, uh, but the caretaker can't hear very well, they can click on a pager and the lights will flash or a vibration can, on their pager and they can go and see what is needed. Here are some examples of what they would look like. And the very one on the, on the top left is a, uh, that one is the, uh, the baby or sound alert. It, that it has the sensitivity dial on there. So uh, if you want the baby really screaming before you actually wake up, you can turn down the, the sensitivity to a, uh, so it's not so sensitive to the cry. Um, the next one in the middle there, this one is actually a receiver. It would pick up a signal from a doorbell or phone or a baby cry. Um, and what's unique about that is you can use a, an existing light, a lamp or a, lamp, a light source and you can hit, click the button on that little device there, turn on the light or turn it off, and whether it's on or off, the light will still flash if there's a doorbell, phone, or a baby cry, or any other type of transmission taking place. The next one over is the doorbell and a phone receiver as well. So that one would receive a, the, the little small button next to that little box. That would be replacing your existing doorbell. Um, so when someone hit, clicks that, it'll send a signal to that device and they'll transmit it throughout the house. Lights flash or vibration take place. 
And then on the bottom right is the door knocker. Um, that one's good for um, like nursing homes or rooms that is not a lot of traffic or noises that take place. An example of where you don't want to use it, the college dorm, uh, a lot of noises, banging, music, that thing would be flashing all the time because it picks up all the vibrations and then when it feels the knocking vibration, the lights will flash so you'll know somebody's out the door. So these are just a few of the very, very many different types of devices out there. <clears throat> the, this is the uh, fire strobe, and this has become the standard now in a lot of places that you go. Then the one next to it, we have where it had the, kind of hard to see, but it had the body-worn pager on the side, and it also has a, a um, kind of a help I've fallen kind of button. Um, so if someone has fallen, can't hurt, can't get up, requires an emergency assistance, they can hit that button, and uh, the, it'll alert the people in the house and you can have it connect to a emergency, emergency personnel and they can come assist the person who has a need. In the next slide, hearing dogs. They're considered, they're considered assistive technology. Um, these are dogs that have been trained and uh, learned how to identify a particular sound and alert the master or the caretaker of what was happening. Most likely if the doorbell rings, they'll run to the door run to the person, run back to the door, keep going back and forth until the person gets up and follows the, the dog. Oh, uh, cats are also a part of these, uh, this program. They do train some cats. There's actually, there's actually some pigs. Uh, there's the there's venture out into pigs. There, there's talk of trying to get a monkey involved, but so far the monkeys are not cooperating. <laughs> Telecommunication devices, the telephones, and that's almost a, another Another um, information all in itself. These are some, a list of devices that are available. Of course, we talked about the telephone reading signalers that I told you about. We also have amplified phones, phones that are louder and have ability to um, adjust the tone control. There's um, text display phones where you can actually read what the person is saying on the other end. Or you have, and you have uh, super loud ringers. If, uh, if the original phone ring is not loud enough, you can actually adjust it to have a higher pitch or lower pitch, a different pattern or a rhythm, anything that's more suitable to the hearing loss. Examples of equipment that can be used to help facilitate communication. Um, a typical cell phone can be used. There's equipment that you can, or there's even software that can actually amplify the noises or adjust the sound where you can make it easier to hear for a person with a particular type of hearing loss iPhone, like Everett talked about, are fantastic. For the video relay, you can actually use video relay service on the iPhone 4 and above. Or you can connect to a, an operator. So if you see anybody walking down the street signing like this, they're most likely using a video phone. It's a wonderful technology. I can use it on my iPad here. You can use a tele, take, call it, make a video call and talk with anybody on this. TTY. I debated about putting that picture in there because TTYs are almost never used. Um, there's only one group that kind of uses it more than others, the deaf blind. Um, most likely because they can't use the video relay service, at least not yet. There's talk of some kind of a, of a glove use and tactile um, sensation where a person can actually feel uh, what is being taken place on the screen. And then there's the webcam at the very far right. Of course, the webcams pretty much goes without saying. You can see the other person speaking. And it's just a picture of the telephone to let you know what they looked like in the old days. <laughs> and then fax machines. Before, uh, before video phone became a big thing, fax machines were the heavily used at one time, or <laughs> most likely before email became used, actually. Fax machines were the, the big thing to have. That was the uh, main way that many people who are deaf or hard of hearing to communicate, drawings and writing. Uh, but now we have email that pretty much replaced that. Uh, you can have send videos, you can send pictures, you can send uh, uh, text type messages and so forth. So, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the, the amplification noises. Um, in here it's called an M-line amplifier. These are two examples of something that would work with an existing corded telephone. If you have a cordless phone, this wouldn't work very well. Um, well, you have the telephone and the cord going from your headset into your, your dial pad. 
that cord is taken out, plugged into this box, and then the wire going into the other, completing the connection to your headset. So if you can't hear the person very well on the phone, you can, you can adjust the volume control it there. And you can see there's two, two uh, dials there. Well, the big one on the left is the, uh, the, the volume, and the top right is the tone control, where like for myself, for example, I have a harder time hearing women's voices, so I would probably give them a lower tone that I can hear them a little bit, a little bit better. And then the one on the right is the same device, works the same way. Where we have the caption telephone. This is the text display phone I was telling you about. And uh, you'll see in the top left here, you have the caller on the, far, on the very far left. <coughs> the person is uh, using the captel. It's connected to, you'll see there's two wires going back and forth from the caller to the person receiving the call. And then there's another line that's going underneath. So what that means is the person that's speaking can also hear the person on the other end. And at the same time, read what the person on the bottom is making sure that's typed out on the screen. So you have three people involved. One that's uh, making sure that all what the other person is saying is shows up on the screen correctly and then the, the two people, the caller and the receiver. So. And uh, the, the little picture on the bottom here is what the captel would look like. And if you've ever used like, the text-to-speech relay again, you're familiar with the uh, go ahead and, and stop keying. Um, every time you fin finish the sentence, you had to say go ahead. So the person would know that uh, you're done talking. With the captel, they've taken that out, so you don't have to say go ahead anymore. Um, that it's a little bit quicker speed. It's using voice recognition technology, but it's not perfect. So that's why you have that third person in there making sure that everything comes across correctly. In the top left here, that looks like a CapTel phone, but this is actually a VCO phone, a voice carryover phone. Um, the difference with that one is, like in the previous slide where the person calls, they can hear what the other person is saying plus read what they're saying. With this one, you don't hear what the other person is saying at all but they, uh, everything that that person is saying comes across the screen, and then you're back to the go ahead and stop keying. Um, so it's, just still, it's still like a, using a text-to-speech relay service, except one end is not used in the TTY, they're using their own voice, but they still require the, the sound to come back. Caption call. Um, this is another uh, piece of equipment that was recently created by Sorensen. Um, they created a, a, a screen, where, works the same way, you're, you're reading everything the person's saying, they're using voice rec rec recognition technology, and you have a person there that's making, sh making sure that everything's correct. The only difference is they're using different ways of carrying that information. The CapTel uses two phone lines, so you have to have two phone lines to be able to use the CapTel. The Sorens and Caption Call is using a phone line and an internet access, so the uh, text is taking place over the internet. Then on the, the very bottom there, the Sorensen relay, the uh, video relay that I was telling you about. That's the an example of the video phone that we use. So you still have a caller and a receiver. And then so the caller is, is, is signing into the, the camera. The person on the other end is hearing what the interpreter, with the third person off screen, is speaking to them. And when they speak back, the interpreter signs back to the person watching them on the television screen. So. The, uh, the differences between what a caption, a CapTel phone and a voice carryover phone would look like. So the CapTel phone is a much bigger screen. Then you have the smaller one, that's the voice carryover. So you just have two lines of text um, be, being able to read what is said. Information about identifying a TTY call. Again, like I said, the TTYs are not being used very often, but we do have some TTY users from time to time. So if you happen to have a TTY in your location, um, and you start to hear a series of computerized beeps or a computerized voice saying, please use text telephone, please use text telephone. Uh, most likely you have an incoming tech, um, TTY call. And once you, get, you, rec you do recognize the TTY call, um, establishing that if you have a direct connect phone, that's um, a TTY that connects directly into the wall. Um, so you can just turn it on and start typing and everything will, take, will communicate over the line. If you have a TTY that's separate, not connected directly into the wall, then you have a telephone next to it. You need to make sure the, the headset, the earpiece, is connected to the earpiece part on the uh, TTY, and then the mouthpiece, they're connected to the mouthpiece part of the TTY. Uh, a lot of times we'll get it switched over. But you just put that on there and start typing, and the communication will take place over that. And then last, uh, 
I want to talk about the loan out program. Probably the, the biggest feature, or the most exciting feature that we have at our center that uh, we like to tell everybody about. If you have a, a need for assistive listening device or alert device and you want to uh, try it out before you purchase it, or if you want to see if it'll work um, in a doctor's appointment or where two indivi individuals speaking and one can't hear very well, you can borrow any of these uh, type of equipment that we have talked about here and um, loan it out for one or two weeks uh, or a month, depending on what we, the need is for. All it requires is a driver's license and a contact so we can make sure we can track you down if we need it back. So uh, you're welcome to uh, borrow and loan out the equipment at any time. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you about with the assistive technology. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm.